There's a mystery afoot. I'm gonna have to get the mystery machine and the gang together to go find out if it was old man Jenkins down at the fucking mill. A few things happen in uh, sort of quick su er, succession, so I will uh, get into that in a second. But uh, yeah, we, we've got a mystery on our hands. There's a there's a puzzle that needs to be solved. Who is ass mad enough? Who is so platinum mad on the internet that they they want to make me go extinct? They're just gonna they're just gonna take me down a peg. Well, this all started with um, <laughs> with Twitter, which isn't surprising because Twitter is the platform where if you sneeze at somebody the wrong way, you're going to be banned for harassment. And lo and behold, my Twitter account is suspended. Oh well, go make another one. That's that's usually what you do when it comes to Twitter. And there's been a bit of a a purge as of late, so not too out of the ordinary. Not not too suspicious, I suppose. But things really started to pick up when after the Twitter ban, all of a sudden, YouTube goes down. Late, late last night, uh, my YouTube channel was terminated. I'd received two strikes. Now, I, I'd received one strike. That would make number two. And the account was completely terminated. Now, what was really bizarre about this was the second strike isn't what gets your channel terminated. Usually on YouTube, you have a three strikes and you're out policy. Uh, for whatever reason, one more strike. I got two strikes. Channel gets taken down. Absolutely eliminated. Pulled down. Even more than that, trying to get into the account to file an appeal, I couldn't do it. So I was locked out of the account. It was completely shut down. All because I had made a video, uh, or what I suspect was the video about a, a shooter that couldn't handle losing at video games. The flag that I had received for that video was for spam and deceptive practices. And yet the message I received from YouTube that you can see displayed on screen, what people saw when they tried to go and look at the channel was, this account has been terminated due to multiple or severe violations of YouTube's policy, prohibiting content designed to harass, bully, or threaten. I guess I went, I went a little too far. I made fun of a pussy that couldn't handle losing in a video game. How dare, how dare I make fun of a mass murderer? Who could be behind this mystery? That's what we're going to try to puzzle out today. I've got a, a list of suspects. And we're going to go over the, the pros and the cons of what makes them suspicious. So uh, the channel gets pulled down, it gets the strikes, uh, Facebook gets locked, Twitter gets pulled. And then last night on the kill stream, uh, Keemstar happened to be in the audience watching it. He watches Ralph a lot and uh, heard about what was going on and said that he was going to contact somebody at YouTube and have him look into it. Uh, this is like at midnight, right? This is like one in the morning or something like that. Well, I don't know who he talked to, uh, but within three hours, the account was back up and operational and the strikes were removed. So whoever he talked to, took a look at the videos and, you know, it came to the conclusion, which I think is the right conclusion, that they're not violating anything. The videos aren't a violation of the terms of service of the platform. That's very bizarre what happened, but I just want to throw that out there. Thank you, Keemstar, for getting my account unfucked. It was uh, very kind of you. It has to be something recent or something controversial. It can't be something from just years ago. It wouldn't make sense can't be some series of videos or a group that would have been affected years ago. Why, why would they choose now? Why wouldn't they have done it right then? They wouldn't, of course. So the first on the list, our suspect number one, the furry fandom. Now, I had put out a video called Cyber Yif 77 making fun of the people that were getting hypersensitive, getting very, very upset about a joke that the developers had made. Uh, it was a very basic joke. It wasn't really that offensive. It was, did you assume our gender? Meant in jest. It was a playful little jab with somebody that was making a little joke of their own. It was a, I, We have this mindset, right, where we want developers to interact with us, where we want to be able to talk to them, uh, regardless, or, you know, regardless of whatever the platform is. So when you finally have a developer that's willing to shit, you know, shit around, banter back and forth, and talk and engage with you, it really sucks to see a group of people come in and fuck that up. Because they're going to be gun shy the next time, so you've got you know a, a rare select amount of them that will do this, and they're just joking back and forth with somebody that's that's tweeting at them, and the these people get very upset. Now, who are these people? You know, I probably should have put a slash on this, but I'll get to that in a second. It uh, a majority of them were furry otherkin. You could go to their profile, you could see the he, she, they, them, their, it pronouns listed proudly. Uh, their headmates were listed. 
I, I swear to God, one of them had headmates listed and had like a link to a fundraiser to raise money for the rent for their headmates. I don't know how that works, but they found a way to pull it off. They, they found a way to work the system on that particular issue. Uh, yeah, I'd said in the video, and I stand by it, that the more easily offended somebody is at a banal joke on the internet, the more likely their bio on social media is full of batshit crazy stuff. And that pretty much held true to the people getting offended by the tweet put out by the cyberpunk developers. Now, that, uh, again, in a large part was people in the furry fandom. The other portion of that would be Reset Era. Now, Reset Era, <laughs> they had a thread about this. I, I should give some background on this so you guys can understand. NeoGAF used to be known as the biggest hug box on the internet when it came to talking about video games. But their admin, I think it's Evil Lore, I can't remember off the top of my head, some stuff he had done and said and was known about years and years ago came out. And this is about a year or two ago. And his form went, H, or went ape shit. Now, he had facilitated this, right? He had grown this kind of culture on his board where people could be hypersensitive and easily offended. And it finally came in on him. All these people he'd raised up to be like these SJWs, these really far-leaning leftists, uh, you know, hypersensitive people that couldn't take a fucking joke. You know, he had let that grow and grow and grow, and it metastasized. It turned into this large, disgusting, tumorous, cancer-filled growth on the website. And they finally set their sights on him. And it created a mini shitstorm that lasted for a couple of days. The end result of that was all these people leaving NeoGAF. So the most hypersensitive people from NeoGAF, the ones that really made the website hell to use, decided they were going to get together and make their own forum. And they were going to call it Reset Era. So they made the ultimate hug box, like the, the elite version of a hug box. Like this is Hugbox Pro. This is Hugbox X, right? And they had a thread about this. And all Reset Era really is when you go to browse it is who can virtue signal the most and who is the most progressive. And if you step out of line even a fucking little bit, you're, you're thrown to the wolves. So they had a thread about the devs. They had a thread about the controversy. And they banned 100 people in one day. Reset Era banned 100 people of the most hypersensitive people from NeoGAF, the most PC liberals you can imagine, got banned on the most PC liberal hug box you can imagine for not being uh, progressive enough. 100 counts get nuked because people are like, well, it's just a joke. Why are you so upset? In fact, you know, if, if I can find this, let me see if I can find this because I'm, I'm fairly certain I posted this. If I can find the image, I'm going to throw it up on screen just to give you an idea of the kind of people I'm talking about and why I would suspect that it could be the free fandom slash reset era. Because when you see the ban reasonings, well, two things are going to happen. One, you're probably going to agree that it would make them a likely suspect. But two, you're probably going to want to go to the forum and see how quickly you can get banned. And I'm going to guess within 10 seconds. Uh, they don't they don't handle jokes very well over there. It's not uh, it's <laughs> It's not their thing. I'm going to have to pull this up from Facebook. And hopefully it comes through good enough. Let me see if I can put this on screen so you guys can see it here. Display capture. Uh, no, I want window capture, I think. I want you to take this as a picture of the captured bans that happened on Reset Era in relation to the cyberpunk devs and their statement. Let's just take a look at some of these, and you tell me if they come across as insane, because they, they are insane. Uh, here, here's the ban list. Users permanently banned for downplaying transphobia, or conflating bigotry with dissent, transphobic trolling, equating rules against bigotry with book burnings, community hive mind trolling. How do you, how do you community hive mind troll? What does that even mean? Are they saying that there's a, a community outside of Reset Era that's hive mind in their thinking and they're coming to troll? Or are they actually saying that you're trolling the hive mind that is Reset Era? Downplaying concerns of LGBT people. Downplaying transphobic rhetoric. Inflammatory drive-by. Dismissing the harm transphobic behavior. Downplaying transphobia. History of dismissive drive-by posts. Dismissing minority concerns. Downplaying transphobia. Victim blaming. Trolling. Peddling disinformation. Transphobic trolling again. 
using terminology meant to ridicule concern regarding social issues, downplaying minority concerns. And this is my favorite, because I think this is the most honest ban I've ever seen on the internet in the fucking history of mankind. User banned for one month, trolling a sensitive thread, prior history of infractions. They, they outright stated, trolling a sensitive thread full of sensitive people on a sensitive website. Why are you so insensitive? This is Reset Era. How dare you come here with your inflammatory drive-by postings of transphobia? Don't you know we're sensitive? Don't you understand that Reset Era is a sensitive website? Oh, oh, this is shameful. What are you doing? Just take a look, chat. Take a look. This is what NeoGAF got rid of. I know, like, uh, you know, NeoGAF has a hell of a reputation, and a lot of it's rightly deserved. But this? This is the cancer that had attached itself to NeoGAF and went to form its own website. This is Reset Era. This is what they excised. This is what uh, Evilor, or whoever, uh, cut out of his body to save himself. Hive mind community trolling. Trolling a sensitive a fucking thread. Equating rules against bigotry with book burnings. How, how does that post even work? <laughs> what, is, what the fuck does that even mean? So, you can see why I would suspect it. Uh, the video went up about a week, a uh, week and a half ago, two weeks ago. And people on Twitter were very upset. There were a few key people that were very mad, uh, some of whom were highlighted in the video, some of whom aren't just part of the furry fandom, but are a part of Reset Era. Uh, that's why I put the little disclaimer about DeviantArts at the beginning, because, well, a lot of the communities that got uh, made fun of there, a lot of the ones that were uh, mocked were furry communities, and they didn't freak out. Uh, in fact, surprisingly, a lot of the people on DeviantArt drew fan art because they, they thought it was funny. So uh, you, you can take it as you will, but that would be suspect number one. Acid Magma, you going to create a new Twitter, Jim? Uh, no, you see, when you're banned on Twitter, you can't make a new account. Uh, now, the account that I was banned on was made in 2016. So if I made a new account after 2016, well, I'd get banned right away for ban evasion, right? Now, on the other hand, my good friend... A very good pal of mine, Mr. Anti-Bully. Uh, he's had an account from 2011, so clearly that couldn't be me. I couldn't have made that account. That couldn't be my account. But if you want uh, hot banter, uh, feel free to go check out Mr. Anti-Bully on Twitter. Throw it out in the chat. Who do you think suspect number two is? Take a, take a wild guess. But I'm seeing one name in particular. I'm seeing one name in particular. Are you, are you all a little Nostradamuses? Are you prescient? Bunch of psychics in my chat? I'm seeing a lot of Matt knows. Does Matt know? I don't know, but he is suspect number two. The Quarry King. Jarbo the Hut. He goes by many aliases. Odin, God of Aspain, is another one that you might not be too familiar with. Good old Matt Mundane. Uh, this is the one that Keemstar thought did it. In fact, he, he outright accused them on Twitter of it. Uh, for those that don't know the backstory, uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief and then go over why I think he might have done this. Uh, I was offline for a couple of weeks, a minor, minor health thing in the hospital for a little bit. Uh, when I came back, uh, I happened to notice that uh, somebody had posted some funny stuff about Matt, about old videos he had done. One of them was called the Polly the Polar Bear video in which Matt went through words of the day uh, in a uh, stereotypical hillbilly voice uh, and uh, went into some uh, racier bits of comedy with it. Uh, so I posted it. Within me posting that uh, clip, his old video, Polly the Polar Bear, within six minutes of that, Matt had pulled down the video and issued a fucking apology on Twitter. He issued a, he issued a fucking apology for a polar bear puppet video from seven years ago. I guess he was really concerned about his image because we all know, based on his social blade, he's the hot topic of the fucking internet. Now, fast forward a few hours from that happening. Uh, the Ralph Retort decides to host uh, a stream of his, the Kill Stream. He does that every night, every weeknight. And they were going to talk about Polly the Polar Bear because it was funny. I made a little video for Ralph, uh, highlighting some of the things Matt's done and then ending on a joke about Polly the Polar Bear. Now, what you need to know is, 
he was streaming, I'd say, for maybe 10 or 15 minutes before the stream instantly went down. It was pulled down. I've seen a lot of streams get pulled, but it was within 10 seconds of the video ending and him starting to talk on the stream that it gets yanked down. Now, to me, that was pretty clear indication that this was mundane Matt. Ralph finds a backup stream. He goes on to talk about it, and I join him. And we're talking about who we think might have done this. Who would have pulled his, his kill stream down? Who would target him? And I flat out said, I believe it's Monday and Matt. I believe there's a lot of evidence that Monday and Matt engages in this behavior. Uh, he's targeted multiple people. Dami Pesos, uh, Godwinson. Uh, just a lot of people. Anytime you put a video up making fun of Monday and Matt, all of a sudden, really strangely, such a coincidence, it would get pulled down damn near immediately. I mean, hell, Dami Pesos didn't just get his YouTube yanked. He got his fucking Twitter pulled, too. Does that sound familiar to anybody? A couple of different accounts got pulled down because he made fun of Matt. Hmm, interesting. So we're discussing this on Ralph's second stream. And we get Monday and Matt to come on. Matt spent the next hour telling everybody how innocent he was. He's such a good boy who didn't do nothing. The Quarry King couldn't possibly have flagged those videos. He couldn't have targeted the kill stream. And I, he, he was out collecting boulders. It's a normal activity everybody engages in. That was his fucking alibi. He told us that he couldn't have flagged the stream because for the last four hours he had taken his nine-month-old baby with him to collect river rocks and boulders because that's a nighttime activity that he engages in regularly. It's a really, it's a really great excuse. You know what it reminded me of? Have you ever been caught doing something and you just are stupid and can't think of something off the top of your head? Uh, when I was very young, I'd say 12, I smoked pot for the first time. And when I came home, uh, completely oblivious to the effects of pot and how it makes you look, my eyes are blazed red. Uh, my mother looks at me and says, why is your eye red? And I, you know, I was on the spot. I didn't really have a good excuse. So I said, oh, I was, I was out in the woods with some friends and we got into an acorn fight. And they hit me in the eye with an acorn. I thought this was the best fucking excuse in the world. It was so airtight. What a fucking alibi. And she sat there for a minute, kind of looking at me. She's like, you got hit in the eye with an acorn. I was like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's really tragic. And then she, she kind of pauses and looks again and says, and the other eye? And I wasn't prepared for that question either. I was like, it was a second acorn? I got hit in both eyes with two acorns in the same fight? It's it's astronomical odds, but I got nailed. Uh, I, of course, I got grounded for that, because who wouldn't be? I mean, it's a fucking retarded excuse, but that was Matt's excuse. He's on a stream being accused of taking down streams and videos, and his excuse is, I'm collecting fucking boulders and river rocks with my nine-month-old baby. I'd break that right up with my I got hit in the eyes with acorns story. So for an hour, he does this. And he's got a kind of a smug demeanor, a little bit, you know, um, with the, you, you can't really prove it, right? You can't really prove that I did it, kind of thing. And about midway through the stream, about an hour, hour and a half into it, of Matt constantly denying this to all the people that are there, uh, Zidane, who is one of uh, the Ralph Retorts, uh, one of Ethan's co-hosts, says, hey, you know, there's a way to show your report history. Uh, and this is where Matt goes into holy fucking shit, burn it down, panic mode. Because everybody on the stream showed theirs. And they all waited. They waited and waited and waited 10 minutes, 20 minutes, damn near 30 minutes for Matt to show this. And he just wouldn't do it. He was very silent. And finally, after being pressured in front of all these people, and, you know, there, there were uh, quite a few people with big channels, right? Uh, you had James Alsup on there, and um, I think he is, what, like 300,000 subs? Uh, Keemstar was popping in and out, and he's at, like, what, 4 million? So he had a lot of pressure on him. And then there were thousands of viewers. So there are a lot of people watching and kind of interested in this. And Matt shows his report history. And what do you know? Monday and Matt has been flagging people nonstop that make fun of him. He flagged Dami Pesos multiple times. He flagged Andy Worski when Andy Worski made fun of him. He flagged Tonkasaw when Tonkasaw made fun of him. He made fun of Failure Hates You when Failure Hates You made fun of him. He went after clipping channels. He went after smaller channels that he would have no reason to even be aware of. Because as we found out on the stream, he had set up Google alerts to his fucking name. So if you talk shit about Monday Matt anywhere on the internet, if you go onto a forum and say Monday Matt and then say something negative, 
If you do it in this chat, if you do it on Twitter, if you make a video with his name in the title or the tags, he is instantly alerted to it and takes action against you. Hour of denial, and he got caught red-handed flagging all these people. And there's speculation that he altered it. He used Inspect Element. And the, the crazy thing about that is if he altered that page that he showed us when he was giving a, a screen share, it would mean that he spent 20 minutes removing his flagging history and was still left with two pages worth of flagging shit. But that's, uh, that's Matt for you. So after this happens, uh, I spend the next couple of days and I make a video. Uh, that video is The Ballad of Mundane Matt. I think it's sitting at half a million views. Now, if you go look at uh, Mundane Matt's social metrics, because uh, he's really tied into this. Don't forget, Mundane Matt's big into the internet. He wrote a fucking book about how to succeed on the internet. You can go find it on Amazon for zero dollars and nobody's buying it. I'm not, I'm not making that up. This asshole thinks he's a social media guru and he's tried time and time again to become a success and so he wrote a book about it. Uh, but he's very tied into the metrics. And he lost 13,000 subs. 13, 14,000 subs. Every single video Matt puts out there's, you know, upwards of a thousand or more dislikes on it. The comment section is nothing but people making boulder jokes or calling him a flagger or telling him just to fuck off and uh, leave the internet permanently. So Matt has a really big motivation to want to get some payback. I mean, let's look at our suspect, right? We looked at the furries, the pros and cons of that. Could have been them, or could have been them, might not have been them. I've had furries that didn't get ass blasted. I've had furries that did get ass blasted. It's kind of up in the air. Well, let's look at Matt. What do we got going here? If I hadn't have posted his video, he would never have gone on the live stream. If he had never gone on the live stream, he never would have got caught flagging. If he never got caught flagging, he wouldn't have lost 13,000 subscribers. I wouldn't have made a video on him. And all those people that make fun of him now constantly wouldn't be doing that. So he has a pretty fucking heavy motivation to be upset. Does he show this behavior in the past? Has he ever targeted somebody? Well, yes, he has. We can confirm that he does. He went after Dami Pesos and lied about it. He went after Andy and Tonka and Failure and Clipping Channels and everybody else because they made fun of him. So imagine somebody makes a video that gets half a million views shit-talking him, who uh, basically fucking ruined his career. He's got some motivation to be angry and be really, really petty about it. So that's why I'd rank him up on my list. I don't know, Chad, am I am I crazy on this? So, yeah, so Matt has a motivation, and he's shown past behavior to do that before. Uh, Matt is also, from what I understand, friends with people that are part of uh, the Trusted Flager program. Um, that's what people have told me. I don't know how true it is. Uh, he's got relationships with people like, I think it's Queenie Martha and others that have some relationship with YouTube. I couldn't tell you. All I know is the first flag I got, uh, the appeal was denied within like 20 minutes, which is really weird. Uh, the second flag I got, I couldn't even appeal, and it led to my channel being struck down. Uh, so I, I, I don't know what's going on with that. Whoever ended up reviewing it, whoever Keemstar talked to, obviously disagreed with the judgment and reversed it. And so I'm appreciative of that. I, I don't think my stuff really violates a lot of the terms of service on the site. Most of it's comedic. I rarely talk about politics or news events. Uh, and I'm usually slow to get to it because I'm not I'm not trying to jump on uh, the newest shit. That's why I'll do a series like Deviants or Tumblrisms that has nothing to do with anything else, uh, just because it's entertaining. So the Quarry King is suspect number two. Now I've got a third suspect. Uh, this third suspect, well, how do I introduce? How do I introduce him? He is, of course, the Trout Father. I'm talking about Kraut and Tea or Kraut and Tears, if you will. Much like Monday and Matt, Kraut does have uh, potential reasons for being angry with me. I made a four-video series about his retarded gay 24-hour opping discord spurgery, uh, in which I laughed at how dumb it was. Uh, the three, uh, two of them were dedicated to things he had done before that and the organization of his discord and just the, the, the stupid shit that he was doing. Third one was related to Somebody that was in the Discord off and on, and somebody that they kind of all knew each other, uh, related to Kilroy. And, you know, strangely enough, by the way, you know, Kilroy was an event that was planned by a woman that was in that Discord, and Monday and Matt was a, f a speaker there. Huh. Anyway, 
Uh, and the fourth video talked about uh, the doxing allegations that were a part of the Discord and everything else that was going on in there. Now, when you talk about coincidental, or coincidental timing, Kraut disappeared off the internet after those videos went live and he was getting a bunch of backlash. And now he's back. And I, he put up two videos, uh, a return video and then a video going after Coach Red Pill. And the weird thing about this, the thing that's very fucking strange about this, is that my channel went down, right? I, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. I started getting flagged about five minutes before his videos went live. So my Twitter account gets suspended, Kraut's videos go up. And then after that, my YouTube account goes down. And then after that, my Facebook account gets locked. So here we have the Trout Father making his glorious return. And the guy that made fun of him in his videos for the dumb shit that he was doing mysteriously is removed from any platform where he could make more jokes about how dumb this shit is. Really gets that noggin joggin'. Really coincidental timing. Now all of Trout's little friends, like David Shitrat and all the other uh, YouTube academics, very gleefully talking shit about my accounts going down and saying how it was a tinfoil hat conspiracy. Even though, you know, the weird thing would be David Shitrat saying that when he's basically on tape telling Kraut that he wasn't going to pass along information to SJWs to target people because he's not that scummy. So, David, I mean, if you were that close to it and you had Kraut asking you to pass along information to get people targeted and you refused to do that, why would this sound like a conspiracy to you? It sounds like you were a part of one to begin with and decided to walk away from it, huh, Dave? But, I mean, maybe the hormones are affecting your fucking mind and you can't think right and the memory is failing you. I, I couldn't tell you why you'd suddenly forget about that convenient little detail. So, Trout comes back and all my shit goes down on the same day. Now, I, I think, I mean, this this is so old. The, the Kraut and T shit. It's like six, seven months old. Uh, but he makes his return and, yeah, all this mysteriously happens on the same day. It, it really is quite the coincidence. Now, the interesting thing is, you could look at it one of two ways. Let's say Monday Matt is really pissed off and wants some revenge. Let's say Kraut is really pissed off and wants some revenge. So, Matt probably finds out that Kraut's going to release his stuff and thinks, this is the perfect opportunity to take Jim down because he'll immediately believe that Kraut's the one that did it and I'll get the heat taken off of me. Or, Kraut decides, I'm going to return now and take Jim's shit down because... Monday and Matt just got caught flagging people and everybody's going to think he did it. So it's like this game of who did it, right? Like, which one of these Spurgs would have been responsible? They can shift the blame onto the other one. It's the perfect fucking opportunity. It's a great window that's opened up for them on who they can target, on who they can teach a lesson to. Now, you know, I guess a con in this situation would be Kraut would have to be just monumentally retarded to do something like this. He would have to know the amount of attention this would draw on him to come back and to flag shit and then get caught doing it. I mean, would he be that stupid? I mean, would he be that mentally fucking handicapped to think that that wouldn't instantly draw suspicion on him? That that timing? That very bizarre timing of that window of just 10 fucking minutes? When the account goes down and all of a sudden here come the videos talking shit about all the people that had made fun of him for the Trout and T-shit? I, I, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, that's why this is a suspect list, isn't it? I mean, I can't... I don't have any evidence for you. I can only give you what my my ideas on what might be going on are. And as far as I see it, there are three main suspects in my mind right now. The Furry Phantom slash Reset Era, because of a video that was recent and their reaction to it. Monday Matt, the Quarry King, because of a video that was recent and his reaction to it. And Trout and T because he just came back and he's looking for some revenge and that revenge was in the form of videos but maybe that expanded into another form you know the we can't let Jim have his say form I don't know uh, with in regards to Kraut you know I don't remember anything related to him flagging people I, I know he did the shitty thing with Rage After Storm on Twitter and I know that uh, that fucked her up a little bit and that cost her a position but I, outside of that, I don't remember hearing anything about him flagging and shutting down accounts. So you've got your three suspects, and 
that's that's where we are at the moment. It's it's a it's a mystery, isn't it? Who who did it? Who done it? Who's responsible for it? I will say this though, and I've noticed this is a common theme when any individual or group of individuals decides to fuck with somebody online. They never stay quiet about it. It might be a day, it might be a week or a month or a year, but eventually they slip up. They want to brag a little bit about it. They want to talk about what hot ops they're running. They want to get a little credit for what they've done. And so they open their dumb fucking mouth. And now occasionally that'll be in private rather than public, but they get into a fight with somebody and that somebody has a screen cap or a record of that conversation and the fucking mystery is solved. I don't really need to hunt down who did this to find out why they did it or you know what the motivation was or what group was responsible because they'll bring themselves to me eventually. All right, how far down on the fucking list is his actual channel listed? There we go. My name is Matt Jarbo. This is the motherfucking Mundane Matt Show. Today is the 28th of August, 2018. And man, you know what? I want a slow day, goddammit. I want a slow day. I just want a day where not a lot goes on. You know, I can cover my stories. I can hang out with my kid. I can have good times. But no, the world, the world doesn't work that way. The world is always trying to find interesting ways to tell you fucked up shit. And this, of course, today, Jesus, is no damn different. It's no damn different. Uh, first things first, uh, there were some accusations made against me last night in regards to some persons having their accounts taken down. False. Fake news. Wasn't me. End of story. Moving on. I'm not going to address it again. But <laughs> there's a... <laughs> <laughs> it's me, guys. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> oh, your account got taken down. <laughs> Giggles. I'm just giggling over here. I'm just Monday, Matt, Matt Monday, the Boulder King, the Quarry King. Just having a little bit of a giggle, having a little bit of a laugh. Wasn't me. Not going to address it. That's false. I never flagged anybody, even though I got caught red handed doing it. <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> I don't know, Matt. Seems a little bit suspicious. <laughs> 